12th of August 2015, Tianjin, China, a series of explosions shook the area. Today we will be exploring the series of events that led to this disaster. This is Kemi Friends and I am your host Akshay Kurwa and let's begin. First things first, what were these series of incidents? On the fateful day, the first reports of a fire at a warehouse in Binhai New Area began coming in at around 10.50 pm local time. At around 11.30, the first explosion occurred and registered a magnitude of 2.3 generating energies equivalent to 2.9 tons of TNT. After 30 seconds, a second, a much more powerful explosion occurred, causing most of the damage and injuries with shockwaves felt many kilometers away. The second explosion registered as a magnitude of 2.9 and generated energies equivalent to 21.9 tons of TNT. Around 11.40 pm, a series of eight smaller explosions occurred in ports as fire from the original blast continued to spread. The total energies released was equivalent to 28 tons of TNT. The explosion left a gigantic crater on the blast site. More than 8,000 new cars from popular brands parked in lots located near the blast site were largely burnt as a result of the initial explosion. According to official reports, this incident killed nearly 173 people and injured hundreds of others. Ruihai Logistics handled hazardous chemicals within the port of Tianjin, such as flammable, corrosive substances, oxidizing agents, and toxic chemicals. What led to this catastrophe? Investigations revealed that the fire started in a container through auto-ignition of nitrocellulose due to vaporization of wetting agent during hot weather. The firefighters who first arrived on the scene proceeded to douse the fire with water. Little did they know about the calcium carbide stored on site that reacted with the water that they were spraying, releasing highly flammable gas acetylene thereby setting in motion a series of more violent chemical reactions. At least 700 tons of highly toxic sodium cyanide was stored at the site, 70 times the legal limit along with calcium carbide. Paperwork was discovered showing that 800 tons of ammonium nitrate and 500 tons of potassium nitrate were at the blast site. This would provide the fuel source for the reaction with the oxidizer ammonium nitrate thus triggering its detonation. Safety regulations required that public buildings and facilities should be at least one kilometer away when not followed and local inhabitants were unaware of the danger. Authorities stated that poor record keeping, damage to the office facilities and major discrepancies in the customs record made it very difficult for them to identify other chemicals that were stored in the site. With the first rains after the initial explosion coming on 18th August, white chemical foams covered the street. Citizens complained of burning skin sensation and rash on sensitive skin parts after coming into contact with rain droplets. Thousands of dead sticklebacks washed up on the bank 6 kilometers from the explosion site on 20th August, fueling fears of water contamination. So what do we learn as chemical engineers from this incident? One of the things that I learned is that SOPs and norms must be strictly followed because we can never be complacent when innocent lives are at stake. Yeah, you can take the easy way out uh, by uh, taking a shortcut, but at what cost? For priceless lives, trading for money and time, that's not even a trade. This incident only serves us as a reminder so we do not commit the same mistake again. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Keep supporting us and thank you. Bye.